I'm Robert Famosi, CISSP and Security Strategist at Synopsys. And hello again, I'm Chris Clark, Principal Security Engineer at Synopsys. And welcome to Fault Injection. Uh, today we're going to be talking about military and government software security in particular. And we're doing so on the occasion of a new report that's coming out uh, from Synopsys and VDC Research, uh, where we look into the aerospace and defense industry in particular in terms of how they handle software security. But before we do that, talk a little bit um, more generally about what types of uh, uses for software uh, we're really talking about today. So there's a wide range of different components when we talk about aerospace industry. It's not just embedded devices. We're looking at very complex systems of systems, as well as a small subcomponents that make up different pieces and parts of our uh, aerospace and defense. You know, when we talk about aircraft, it's not just anything that's in the aircraft. We have traffic control systems, guidance systems, everything else that goes along with that, um, that product. So very wide ranging. And in some degree, it's, it's similar to uh, industrial control systems, where you've got a lot of remote sensors out in the field that you're relying upon for right. instrumentation, feedback, and... Um, and protection of life. And protection of life. The safety and, and the human element is very strong here. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that the software that's going into these devices that are going into the aircraft function properly. Right. Failure here could result in the loss of life. Right. And there's a lot of misconceptions about this. It, you know, it is an expensive process to test as thoroughly as we would need to due to the criticality of these systems. But that doesn't always mean that it is only destined for aerospace deployment. You know, we may right. very well see these systems trickle down into more consumer level type devices. So there's a lot of development that takes place that is far reaching and long reaching. There's specific implications both from a safety and a security standpoint. Right, well certainly anything military aerospace is gonna trickle into civilian aerospace at some point in time. Right. So, yeah. um, so some of the statistics that are in the report um, were very interesting because it drilled down specifically on aerospace and, and defense. And that's a subsector that doesn't get a lot of attention, but we felt there was a need for it. And one of the things was the importance of security in current projects. Mm, yep. So one thing that I find interesting about that, and we should probably clarify, when we talk about security, we're talking about software development security. Right. We're not necessarily talking about infrastructure protection, even though that is a, a component of it. One of the statistics that stood out in my mind was the fact that 16% viewed uh, security as a critical element of what they do as compared with the average in the software industry of 13%. Mm. Which is pretty telling. I mean, that really kind of gives you an idea that all, all organizations view security as important, but there's still those components that are underlying that are kind of ignored. Now, important is one of the subcategories here. Mm -hmm. It's just we called out the critical because that stood out that in aerospace and defense, you saw 16% uh, feeling that it was part of their job to be uh, uh, on top of the security element. Now, was the number higher for aerospace industry compared to normal industry? The biggest difference came on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, this is where the respondents said that security was not as important, and in the aerospace industry that was 24%, whereas uh, in the average it was 16%. Wow. And there are a couple factors here that come into play. You have to understand that, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of these elements are not just in the aircraft. It's on the land, it's out in the field somewhere, and so they might view that there's no sensitive information being captured by the sensors or the devices that are out in the field. Therefore, security falls to uh, a lower rung on, on their priorities. Mm -hmm. But connectivity seems to be so much more prevalent in the aerospace industry currently. I mean, when we look at aircraft tanks, even soldiers on the battlefield, there's a high level of connectivity. And, right. you know, one of the old premises, or at least I thought it was an old premise, was that it's not on the network, so it's not important. Does that still hold true, or are we seeing some changes in that, that area? We're, we're seeing some changes in that. Um, there's, there's a term called brownfield, where you're talking about older legacy technology that's out in the field, and that's getting retrofitted. And again, there's similarities with go what's going on in the industrial control uh, space. Um, you have older devices that are being retrofit and with um, protocols that allow it to communicate. But the design may not have anticipated that. The design may not have uh, thought that at some point in time this information would be shared. Also, we don't necessarily know if that information being captured could be used at a later date and time for other purposes. So okay. um, some interesting uh, 
things come when you add connectivity to any device. Right. So, yeah. so it's not so th – that data may be ephemeral. It's not that important at that point in time. But later. Maybe later aggregation right. of that data. Right. Yeah. So – Another thing that I kind of found important, one of the st statistics that came out was 52% of non-connected devices really weren't categorized as important. Right. What, what do you make out of that? Well, again, uh, we're not thinking of the future. We're not anticipating the day when those devices will be connected. Mm -hmm. And so not building in security, not building in the type of quality that you need at that early stage may be a problem in a few years. Right. And I think we see the same thing in another space. You know, when we talk about reasons that some devices aren't important, 31% of the devices are, are not sensitive because they're embedded devices. We see that everywhere, though. It's not just the aerospace industry. Right. We see that in others. Uh, when we talk about Target, that was a prime example. You right, know, the heating a, and air conditioning system being compromised. Right, it wasn't a critical system. It wasn't right. viewed as a critical system. We see that repeatedly not only in retail outlets, but we see that in the medical space, automotive space as well. Yeah, it's so it's rather say. challenging. Right. True. So um, the report also asked if they were identifying vulnerabilities when they're doing software uh, development. And 23% said that they didn't know if they were doing any sort of testing in the development. Now that compares with an average of 13. Right, so right. this was sort of an eye-popping statistic that they could have so many people not know whether they were testing the quality of their... Right. Well, what I find very interesting about that is, you know, as you know, we released the Pony Model Report for medical right. device manufacturers, and we found a very similar trend. Many of the healthcare delivery organizations didn't know or didn't have an idea of what type of testing was being performed. So it seems like we have a trend across multiple industries here. Yeah, the lack of knowledge, uh, knowing about what's going on. You, you had mentioned that in the very first podcast. <laughs> the need for more knowledge. Right. Transfer of knowledge. Right. Open communications. And I know from an A&D perspective or aerospace and auto, um, defense perspective, that's much more challenging. But that can be controlled, especially if it is a closed system. Right. You know, in the reality, there is no real closed system. Anything could be compromised. But if they're communicating internally and sharing that information, maybe there's a way to trickle that down to not only aerospace and defense, but also other main, uh, other verticals. Right. And so the overarching theme for our uh, early podcasts here is supply chain. And certainly this is a case where you have the cyber supply chain playing a very important mm -hmm. role. You have a lot of contractors who are contributing. And being able to know what those contracted pieces contain, what the software contains that you're inheriting from another party is important. Um, you had mentioned earlier in a podcast about throwing it over the fence to another team right. and not really communicating back and forth uh, what's there. Right. Well, and you know, to be fair, from the aerospace and defense in industry, they've really moved to purchasing off-the-shelf components. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you go into that realm, that supply chain expands exponentially. We're not. We're no longer looking at. I'm purchasing an individual chip from a manufacturer. You're buying a chip. You're buying intellectual property. You're buying all the software components that drive that chip. So the number of participants in that supply chain grows cr uh, very quickly and becomes very difficult to manage over time. Right. And then also you have a lot of regulations and standards in this space. It's not a free for all. True. They do have to adhere. It's just, uh, do we find that those standards are keeping up to date with the technology changes? Uh, that is one of the challenges we face in other industries. You know, as you know, I work quite a bit in the automotive space. Right. We face this very same problem. As we're developing standards, we're thinking not only next year, but the next five to seven years, potentially 10 years, of how are we going to be able to manage a cybersecurity process over time. And we've quickly realized it's very difficult. So um, the aerospace and defense industry has an added challenge that when a component goes into production or to release, those lifespans are very long compared to any industry. Really, probably the closest is going to be the aerospace industry. Right. When we talk about an aircraft that's going to be in service not for 10, but most likely 20 years, maybe right. even 30 years. Right. So how do we manage that? And their requirements are much more stringent in that respect. I think we've both flown airplanes that were over 20 years <laughs> At old. Least. So. <laughs> At least. At so, least. Yeah. It, so check out the report. It's available on synopsis.com, and it talks about the uh, software uh, quality and security found in the aerospace and defense industry today. And as always, we look forward to seeing you at our next podcast, and we hope you have a great time and be safe out there.